Freshwater species are under threat across the world, with a decline of 84% since 1970. It's a beautiful and hidden world which we really get to encounter, and much of it is left as a mystery to us. Until now, I recently got sent an eDNA kit from Nature Metrics, which put simply allows you to take a water sample of your chosen venue, a river, lake, pond or the sea. You then send the sample to them and they'll be able to tell you what species are living in the vicinity and it's something I couldn't wait to try out. It was hard to pick a place to try this out, but decided on Imungas Pond in Nottingham. It's a place I've fished and ponded since I was a kid and enjoy it for the wildlife now, so I was really intrigued to see what creatures might be found below. It's close to the River Trent and the two often flood in the winter, so any number of fish could be found in the pond. I should add that just because a species doesn't turn up on the sample, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not present, but depending on the size of the venue, may be lower in numbers or not in the area you surveyed. You'll get some gloves in the kit, this is to avoid getting your own DNA in the water. One of the first things to do was to collect water samples. For the best spread of DNA, it's best to collect various samples of water from different locations on the same venue. This way you have a much better chance of getting more species. Once you've collected the water samples, give it a good mix and start filtering it. The more you filter, the more DNA you'll collect, although 500 to 2000 millilitres is ideal. You pump the collected water into a filter which collects the eDNA. This is what you'll be sending off. Once it's done it goes into a bag and sent off to the lab. It can take up to 8 weeks so it's a bit of a long wait but eventually I received an email with the results and couldn't wait to see what had turned up. Now this result had turned up fish and birds and I'll go through the birds first. Now none of them particularly surprised me, things like cormorants, swans, heron, all the usual suspects although it was nice to see water rail which are they're not a rare bird but they're very, very elusive. So it's nice to see that those are present on the pond. However, what I was really interested in the fish species that it picked up. Now again, a lot of these were not that surprising. Common bream were found in good numbers, and these have always been pretty common on the pond. There's some nice shoals of common bream in there. Carp, now recently some carp were stocked in the pond, uh, so there are still a few of them left anyway, but there was carp that was picked up on the survey. Gudgeon, there's some good shoals of gudgeon in there, so that was great that they turned up. Dace slash orf, now they're both closely related, so I'm thinking it's probably more dace than orf. Uh, orf are an ornamental species, so I guess people could have dumped them from their ponds, but there's lots of dace in the Trent nearby, so dace are not really a surprise on that either. Minnows, again, they would have come out of the Trent, they're not a still water species, so that proves that fish are definitely moving between the pond and the lake when it's in flood. Now one of the ones that caught my eye was bitterling species, and this would be a, a, a bitterling, more than likely the European bitterling, and these are a non-native fish, however, they don't really cause any problems. They're similar to a small bream, and they've got a very unique way of breeding. They lay their eggs inside of living swan mussels in a sort of symbiosis because the mussels then detach their young into the fish's gills. So it's really interesting to find these as they can be quite sparsely populated around the UK, but it turns out there's a good population of these fish in the pond. Roach were not a surprise, lots and lots of roach in there. They came out, probably the most numerous fish in the pond via that survey was roach. Chub, so that's come out of the Trent. Again, these were river fish, so really interesting that chub turned up and tench, which are a still water fish. Now, the lake is well known for its pike and pike did come up in the survey as well. And one that caught my eye was ruff. Now, ruff are a small member of the perch family and then again, they're another one of those fish where they're pretty widely distributed, but they're very difficult to pin down. I'd be interested to know if any anglers have ever caught ruff out of Imungus Pond, but the survey picked them up, so there must be some ruff in there. Now, the last two are what caught my eye. Perch slash sanders, so perchidae species. Now, there are definitely perch in the lake. There are a lot of perch in there, in fact, but it couldn't differentiate between the DNA, which suggests to me there's a good chance that both of them are in there. Now, Xander are a non-native uh, predatory species of fish, although again, a little bit like the bitterling, they tend to just slot into the ecosystem, so getting about the same size as pike, I can't see them overtaking the pond. And I think if there were good numbers of Xander, 
anglers would have probably caught them by now. However, there are definitely Xander in the Trent. In fact, I've seen Xander being caught opposite the pond in the Trent. So when it floods, there's no reason why Xander wouldn't make their way into the pond and probably do quite well. So I suspect there are some Xander in the pond. This isn't 100%, but it does suggest the fact that it couldn't pick out 100% perch DNA. And we know there are perch in there. There's a good chance of Xander in there as well. And the last one, European bullhead. And these are a lovely little bottom dwelling fish. Uh, again, normally associated with rivers, but they do live in still waters. So if one thing, this survey has kind of confirmed that fish movement between the, the river trend and the pond is happening on a fairly regular basis, predominantly during floods, I would think, but also during the, the little relief channel. And it just goes to show that these eDNA surveys can definitely be worth a go just to see what's hiding in there, because some of those species I was a little bit uh, surprised at, but... It's always worth a go, you never know what's going to turn up. So I'd highly recommend getting one of them. I'll put a link in the description. Maybe you have a fishery or you own a lake and you want to know what's living in there. You can get one of these kits, send off, and it'll give you a good idea of what's lurking below the water. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out the Bearded Tits podcast? Each Tuesday, I talk to wildlife TV presenters, camera operators, and scientists about what makes them love the natural world.